This is part 8 in our series of lectures on infinite sets. In this lecture, I'm going to prove that the open interval from 0 to 1 and the set of all real numbers are both uncountable sets. And I'm going to do it by using a very famous uh, argument in mathematics known as Cantor's diagonalization argument. So, so far we've seen lots of examples of denumerable sets, but we haven't seen any examples of uncountable sets. Recall that a set is defined to be uncountable if it is not finite and it is not denumerable. So uncountable sets uh, from the point of view of cardinality are really much bigger than denumerable sets. They're bigger in the sense that it's possible to get an injection from a denumerable set into an uncountable one, but um, it's impossible to make that injection a surjection. So we're going to prove that 0, 1 is uncountable, and after we do that, we're going to show by means of a picture that uh, 0, 1, and R have exactly the same cardinalities, um, and so that will pro prove that R is also an uncountable set. In order to do the proof, I'm going to make use of some facts about decimal expansions of real numbers. So um, let me make a few comments about decimal expansions before we do the proof. So given any infinite sequence of integers where uh, the members of that sequence are selected from this set here, then you can form what's called a decimal expansion. It's just indicated by this kind of a notation. And that's just a shorthand for this infinite series here. And one can prove that that infinite series always converges to some real number um, in the interval from 0 to 1. I'm including the endpoints uh, because if all of the a's were equal to 0, then this would obviously add up to 0. But if all of the a's were equal to 9, you'd get 0 0.9999, etc., it's easy to see that uh, that geometric series adds up to 1. But conversely, if you give yourself any real number between 0 and 1, it can be shown that it has a, a decimal expansion um, as above. The catch is that um, some real numbers between 0 and 1 have more than one decimal expansion. For example, if you add up this particular geometric series here, you'll discover that it adds up to the number 0 0.1. So here you see we've got two different decimal expansions. The digits are not the same, um, but they represent the same real number between 0 and 1. But I claim that it's possible to show that the only way one can get a lack of uniqueness in decimal expansions is if we are able to represent the number with an infinite string of nines versus an infinite string of zeros. And so that means that uh, if we have the choice, if we decide to never allow our decimal expansion to end in an infinite string of nines, then the decimal digits in our expansion will be unique. And we're going to, so in, in future we're going to always, when we have the choice, we're not going to allow a decimal expansion it ends in an infinite string of nines. Okay, so now we're ready to do the proof um, that 0, 1 is uncountable. Okay, so here's the proof. We're going to argue by contradiction. We're going to assume that 0, 1 is not uncountable. Um, and so that means either it's finite or it's denumerable. But obviously it's not finite because it contains at least this particular infinite set here. So that means it must be denumerable, and therefore there must exist a bijection from the natural numbers into 0, 1. And we're going to get a contradiction um, just from the fact that we'll show that it's impossible that f is surjective. So for each n in the natural numbers, when we take f of n, we get a number between 0 and 1, and therefore it has a decimal expansion. And I'm going to denote the decimal expansion of f of n using this particular notation here. So the n um, tells you the, the dependence of the digits on n. Well, if you let n vary, 
so that you look at all of the various decimal expansions you get over all of the f of n's. Supposedly, that's supposed to generate all of the numbers between 0 and 1, but it gives us an infinite matrix, an, an n by n matrix of decimal digits. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the diagonal entries of that infinite matrix, namely a11, a22, a33, etc. And we're going to use those decimal digits to construct a decimal expansion of some number that couldn't possibly be any of these. Now for each n in the natural numbers, we're going to define a, uh, an integer b sub n as follows. What we want to do is we want to def define it so that it's different from a sub n n. So we define b sub n to be 5 if a sub n n is not equal to 5, and we define it to be 6 if a sub n n is 5. So we've made sure that b sub n is different from a sub n n. Now once we have the b's, we can create a decimal expansion out of it, and we'll call the resulting real number in 0, 1, y. Now the decimal expansion of y consists entirely of 5's and 6's. There aren't any 9's in it at all. Now if it were really true that f is surjective, then there would exist a natural number n such that y is equal to f of n. So that would mean the decimal expansion of y and the decimal expansion of f of n would be equal, so this is the decimal expansion of y, this is the decimal expansion of f of n, and neither of them consists of an infinite string of nines, we made sure of that, and therefore the corresponding decimal digits must be identical. b1 must be a n1, b2 must be a n2, etc. But you see, we've arranged that the nth digit, b sub n, is different from the nth digit, a sub n n and therefore it's impossible for these two to be equal, and therefore we have a contradiction. So this contradiction shows that it's impossible for f to be surjective, and that contradiction establishes that 0, 1 is uncountable. That completes the proof. But uh, just let me make a final comment before we leave the proof to show you what's going on. So this is the infinite matrix I talked about before, which gives you all of the digits of the various decimal expansions. So these are the digits in the expansion of f of 1. These are of f of 2. And so what I'm doing when I take the b's is I'm choosing b1 to be different from this digit. And therefore, by uniqueness, um, regardless of what I put in the other slots, it's impossible for the decimal expansion of y, the one with the b's in it, to equal the to equal the f of 1 because the first digit differs. Similarly, I looked at this entry and I made sure that b2 was different from this and therefore it's impossible that f of 2, which has these decimal digits, can agree with y. And similarly, in the nth slot, I made sure that b sub n was different from this one and therefore it's impossible for f of n, which has these decimal digits, to agree with y. So that's the idea of the proof, and that's why they call it Cantor's diagonalization argument. So finally, as a corollary, uh, we're able to deduce that R is also uncountable, and that comes from the fact that R and 0, 1 actually have exactly the same cardinality. Let me just show you a picture to illustrate why that's the case. Okay, so let me draw x, y coordinate axes. And let's look at the interval from 0 to 1, and I'm going to just construct a function like this. So it's some kind of a tangent function. It's a, um, a dilation and a um, translation of the, the usual tangent function. And there you see that is clearly a bijection from 0, 1 to the set of real numbers, and um, that establishes the corollary.